Well, my name is Bill Aiken. I married my wife, Jean, uh, the same year I came into Youth for Christ, back in 1949. And at the end of this year, it'll be 62 years of ministry, making me the longest running uh, player in the game, <laughs> so to speak. Well, I think outside of the fact that kids uh, have changed in some measure, uh, I think uh, the sp pace of their life, the technology that's changed the way they live, all these different things, I think basic needs of kids are the same. Uh, needing love, needing caring people around them, encouragement, all those different aspects that go into a person's life. And I think that that's one of the strong suits of our ministry today, that we're meeting kids where they are, trying to understand the changes in the technology, understanding the abuse and the sex and the drugs and all those things that are tearing them apart, but understanding that inside, in their heart, they still have the same basic needs, and the biggest need of all is to know Jesus as a personal Savior. What Bill injected into some people's lives was nothing short of the Father that many of these students never had. I can't tell you how many of my fellow students that I went to school with at Lawrence North, I know they did not have a presence at home in a father that ever wrapped their arms around him or her. And Bill, as everybody knows, wrapped his arms around people like no one else can. Bottom line was it drew them into the kingdom of God because of his love expressed from Jesus outward into these students' lives. When I think of a legacy for Bill, there was not a single individual that would walk into a club where Bill was in the room that he would not, first of all, grab and hug like they've probably never been hugged, but that his whole, total, unconditional acceptance, period. And that drew people. That drew people over and over again so that he could speak truth into their lives. But without that character quality of absolute, total acceptance, unconditional love, regardless of how they looked, who they were in their school setting, the influence that they did or did not have in their peer group, none of it mattered. And they knew that Bill loved them, and they were going to listen, therefore, to anything that he said and spoke into their lives. That is a single character quality that he brought to the table that, more than anything else, says who Bill is. Well, I think the compelling factor is, first of all, my calling. Uh, Philippians 1, 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will keep on performing it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I think that not only means my salvation and his lordship in my life, but I believe it's what he's called me to do, work with young people. And I think, for me, it's significant. This is the only full-time job I've ever had. If it's a college job, it's not a job. It's, it's a mission and a blessing. Um, I think of Bill Aiken and just his, um, the love he has for people year after year after year. And, and look at myself and thinking, okay, I've done this for 10 years. This is my 11th year. And how can I continue to do this year after year after year? And I look at Bill and I think, oh my gosh, like here's this guy who, um, you know, can just love whoever walks across his path and show them love. You know, it's not even just, oh, I love you because God loves you. You know, it's, I truly, genuinely care about you and I want to show you how much God cares about you. And so if I can live my life in a way that shows love to people and builds a legacy like that where people are, you know, people I run into all the time are saying, oh, you do Campus Life, do you know Bill Aiken? He led me to Christ, you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago and I'm where I am today because of what Bill did in my life, you know, what God used Bill to do in my life. and. Um, just what an awesome testimony that is. And, and the times that I think, gosh, I can't do this anymore. I can't relate to the kids anymore. Um, and then I turn around and see Bill and I just think, oh my gosh, all it takes is someone who's willing to love and someone who's willing to let God love through them. And then there's the legacy. Lately, you know, as you get older and after been in the ministry for 60 years, uh, the enemy tries to plant in your heart the seeds that you can't do it anymore. And I remember one day pulling up in front of L.N. and getting ready to go into school for lunches and the devil said, you need to straight, uh, stay in the car because you can't do this anymore. And I said to the Lord, Lord, if you want me to go in there, I will. And I did and had one of the best contacting days we ever had. I really think that the legacy of people like Bill Aiken is just their faithfulness and love. It has been really cool to see, um, to see 60 years of ministry, what that includes 
and it's really, it really is a legacy of Lives Changed because you see that it's not just high schoolers coming to know Christ, it's families that have students that um, their parents were saved during um, a ministry that happened in campus life 30 years ago and to see that whole lives, whole families being changed with that message um, is really the legacy that they, that they bring. I think what encourages me about young staff today are several things. One, uh, their love for Christ and for the compassion they have in reaching kids for Christ. That's primary. They're teachable. Uh, they have talent. That you, it's unbelievable. The only thing I can see is hope for the future, the blessing of young staff taking the Word of God and using it to win kids for Christ. And I think the other thing that's important is the fact that they are doing the key thing, not following an organization, but following Him. What I hope to leave as my le legacy in ministry is that I'm a servant of Christ, and by that I mean that everyone will realize it's not about me, but it's about Him, and it's about putting Him first in all things.